Y... Busters on what the most effective way to shoot a gun was. Guess what it was. You guys know all the different types of shooting guns, right? Yeah, like the gangsta. Oh, right. I'm from the West. Everybody owns guns in the West. Okay, so there's the there's the gangsta, and then there's the you know the police, and then there's like um, there's the two at one time. Uh, and then they're shooting from the hip. 
okay? Bam, bam. You, you guys have seen westerns, right? Where they have the rifle and they're, it's just right next to their hip and they just go like this. Okay, that was the least, the least effective way to shoot a gun. The best was the police one. Uh, surprise, surprise. You're connecting from the hip. You and Matt both. You guys, have, I don't know why, your ictus is down at your hip and it, it's low and to the right. Um, and it sinks down, especially when you feel more uncomfortable. It's kind of like a tell for you. Stop doing that. It's the least effective way to shoot a gun. By darn, kill those bad guys dead. Right in front of you, very stable. Okay, um, also you need a little more economy of motion on your fermatas. Your fermatas, you're giving me a wide bouquet of different shapes and sizes and consistencies. <coughs> Try to make them a little bit more consistent. Some of them were small, some of them were big, some of them were this way, some of them were loops, some of them were that, like a rainbow fermata. Um, and then you sometimes you do a little squiggly at the front, just a nice even circle. Um, and then your beat one sometimes is not breaking the plane. It's good to experiment with different kinds of fermatas, but it should be obvious to us when you're changing how you're doing your fermata, because it should be affecting the sound and it should, you know, it should be predictable. We should recognize, oh, now they're trying something different. So not just all over the place. Uh, you look really relaxed and comfortable, which is good because it looks like you're not carrying any tension except your hand is really loose. So you're getting like all these fingers dangling, which then do this when you conduct, so, like they extend down, like so you're kind of you're putting your rectus in your fingers. I mean it's in the tip, yeah. but they're matching. Uh, I would just tighten the grip up just a little bit. It doesn't have to be white knuckle, but you don't want this either where they're constantly moving. And they don't even, you know, if they're not around the baton, fine with me, but don't let them move around a lot. Uh, there was one other thing. Yeah, the fermata thing, you are you have kind of the same thing where they're floating just a little bit sometimes where they come out and then they move. Like, just in general, guys, you, fermatas don't float. Just keep them in the spot. They can, but I don't know why they would. It's what my professor, my undergrad, calls mumbling when you conduct, which is any extraneous motion that you have. And it might not be doing anything bad, but if you mumble when you speak, people can't understand you clearly. So if you have extra motion that people can't interpret when you're conducting, why is it there? You're mumbling. You're communicating something strange that people don't understand, and they don't know what to do with it. And when you're when Fermatas float to me, that's mumbling because there's no reason for them to be traveling around. So, anyway, that's that.